Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be deriving the equation for slip angle and I'm going to be using this book, Automotive Engineering Fundamentals by Richard Stone and Jeffrey Ball to come up with this derivation, hopefully simplify it a little bit. Now these two equations here uh, for slip angle for the front and the rear of the vehicle are very important in understanding vehicle dynamics and I'm going to be referencing these equations in videos so I just want to make sure I'm thorough uh, and so I'm going to derive this here. Now if you are terrified of math or you can't stand math uh, you can close your eyes or plug your ears uh, you could quit watching the video but in all honesty you know when it comes to mechanical engineering this is pretty basic stuff so don't be too afraid of watching. Okay, so I've got three diagrams here which are going to be helping us out uh, in explaining where this equation comes from. The first one here, lateral force versus slip angle, uh, and this, as you notice, has a linear curve for small slip angles. So the lateral force will be equal to the slope, which is the quartering stiffness. Uh, this is a property of the tire multiplied by the slip angle. That's our first equation here. The second diagram I've got here is basically what's the bicycle model. Uh, it's a model of a car looking from top down. Uh, and so this represents the two front wheels. This represents the two rear wheels. Basically everything's combined into one. Uh, and then this third model here is looking at the car from the side. Here you have the front tire, the rear tire, and you are looking at it from the side and there's a center of gravity in the middle. So we have our first equation, uh, which says the force the lateral force is equivalent to the cornering stiffness multiplied by the slip angle. So in order to calculate the slip angle, we can just divide the cornering, for, or the cornering stiffness over. So we get slip angle equals the lateral force divided by the cornering stiffness. Now our next equation, this is a basic dynamic equation, uh, the force of the center of gravity of this vehicle going around a corner is equal to mv squared over r, m being the mass, v being the speed it's going around, and r being the radius. So if you take a ball on a string and you swing it around a center point at a constant speed, uh, basically the force on that ball is going to be equal to mass times velocity squared divided by r. This is a basic equation from dynamics. I'm not going to derive it, but I will have a link in the video description that does derive it if you're interested. Now, if we sum the lateral forces, uh, we're looking at this bicycle model here. Uh, if we sum the lateral forces, then four small angles, then we can come up with our next needed equation. Um, and basically, you're going to have uh, the force on the front tire, the force on the rear tire, and that's going to be equal to the force of the center of gravity, which is traveling the other way, of course, because your tires are holding your car on the road. Now, I, I noted here for small angles, and the reason that's important is because actually this force here isn't directly perpendicular to this force of the center of gravity. It's at an angle. But for small angles, uh, because this is going to use the cosine of that angle, the cosine of a small angle is going to be about 1. And so basically what I'm telling you is uh, this is a very accurate representation for small angles where the force on the front tire and the force on the rear tire is equivalent to the force uh, at the center of gravity. Uh, pretty simple equation there. And if we substitute this in for the force of our center of gravity, then we can see that the force on the rear plus the force on the front is equal to mv squared over r. Okay, moving on to the fourth equation. Let's sum the moment about the center of gravity. So we're going to be summing the torquing forces, basically, about this point right here. So we have the force of the front times A. That'll be torquing in this direction. And that has to be equal to, uh, basically from statics or dynamics, uh, the force of the rear times B. So this torquing force multiplied by this torquing force, they have to be the same. Otherwise, the car would be like bending and... Uh, you know, kind of destroying itself. So that's just a basic equation. Um, and so this gives us the force at the front is equal to the force of the rear times B. And then you just divide over that A, so divided by A. Okay, so now step five, uh, and things are going to start to get a little more tricky. We're going to be substituting uh, the equation that we have in four into this equation that we have here in five. So we can see that the force of the rear here plus the force of the front is equal to this, so we can substitute that in, and that equals mv squared over r. That makes sense. Okay, now we're gonna be, uh, basically you can see that fr times, uh, plus fr times b over a, is the same thing as fr times one plus b over a, and that's equal to mv squared over r. All right, great, that's simple. Now a plus b equals l, you can see that here, l is just the wheelbase of the vehicle. So if we take one plus b over a, that's the same thing as saying 
a plus b over a. So a divided by a would be one plus b over a, so one plus b over a. So we have a plus b over a, that's the same thing as saying l over a. And the only reason we're doing this is to substitute l into this equation. So we can have now, we can say fr times l over a because one plus b over a, as we proved here, is equal to l over a. So fr times l, l over a equals mv squared. And so now if we move L over A to the other side of the equation, you can see that FR, so you multiply that by A, so MA, you divide everything by L, so MA over L multiplied by V squared over R. So we have our final equation from step five. So FR is equal to the mass times the distance A divided by L, the wheelbase, multiplied by the speed divided, squared divided by R. Okay, now, we want to find the weight on the rear axle. And in order to do this, we're going to be using this diagram and we're going to be summing the moments about this front side right here. So we know that basically mg times a is going to have to be equal to uh, wr times b. But if we sum the moments about it, so we've got wr times l, wr here, it's going to be providing this torque, basically wr the force times the length at which it's acting. So that's wr times l minus mg over a. So mg coming down at a distance a, mg being of course mass times gravity. So that would be, you know, the force coming down the weight of the car. Okay, so rearranging this a bit, you have wr equals mg a, and then you can divide over l over l. So wr over g, if you rearrange once again, you divide this g over on this side, wr over g equals ma over l. And this is useful because as you can see right here in this equation for the force of the rear, ma over l is equal to wr over g. So we're gonna substitute that in uh, for our equation number seven. So fr is gonna equal wr over g, which is the same thing as ma over l, times v squared over r. Okay, we are almost there. Uh, hopefully at least 5% uh, of you are still with me. And what we have here is we're going to substitute equation seven into equation one. So we know uh, we'll do this for the rear. So we know the slip angle at the rear will be equal to the weight uh, at the rear divided by gravity times V squared over R. And all of this is gonna be divided by the cornering stiffness. So once we divide that cornering stiffness, we can put that in the equation. The slip angle at the rear is equal to the, rate of the weight of the rear divided by the cornering stiffness at the rear multiplied by V squared over GR. And that's our final equation. This gives us our slip angle. Uh, and this is actually cool because you can use this now to calculate why your car would be understeering or oversteering. Uh, you can use it you know, in determining where you should be placing weight in order to maximize uh, the car's steering dynamics. And so it's a very valuable equation and I will be using it in other videos. So hopefully for those of you who are interested in where this equation came from, that made sense. And if that didn't make any sense, of course, feel free to leave questions and comments below. Thank you for watching.